Aloha folks and welcome to Hearts of Iron 4, it's been a long wait but now we're here. Paradox has very kindly given me access uh, to the the game before the release. Now, the game will be releasing June 6th, but yes, it's June 2nd now. And uh, yeah, that's the privilege of being a YouTuber, I guess. Who will we be playing as? Well, we're gonna be playing as Brazil in 1936, and why is that? Well, the big countries, of course, we're gonna be playing them at some point, but I feel like everyone does that at the very beginning, you know, so let's do something different. Uh, some of you may have seen my Swedish uh, communist playthrough, and uh, it's very interesting, so you should watch that. But, uh, I feel like, you know, we, we need something else going as well. Uh, and why are we playing Brazil? Well, because uh, Brazil is the most powerful s uh, South American country, and I'm Brazilian. Yes, that's right. I'm not only just Swedish, I'm also Brazilian and born in Ecuador, so there you go. I'm the true international uh, man. Ah, let's uh, get this started, shall we? Now, here we are. Okay, so what's the second part? Uh, yes, why are we going to be playing as fascists? Well, because... Honestly, if you look around here, you'll see that all the countries are uh, guaranteed by uh, the United States as part of the Mo Monroe Doctrine. And playing as a democracy, I mean, Brazil in real life joined the war on the Allied side in 1942. And, you know, that's, that's kind of boring. I mean, we're not going to be able to do much. And the communist side, that might be interesting, but we're already playing as Swedish communists and... <sighs> Like, I feel that we're, we would be very far away from the Soviet Union or uh, any other potential allies, so I think fascism might be the way to go, and hopefully we'll be able to perhaps, you know, get a nationalist Spain in this game, but we'll see. It's going to be very interesting indeed. Uh, now, also, just before we get started, Estado Novo. Uh, we are non-aligned and despots, uh, because this guy was pretty much the supreme dictator of Brazil during this time. And, um, yeah, this gives us joint faction tension limit plus 40%, land lease limit, guarantee limit, it's drift defense goes down though, but yeah, it's pretty tough, so we'll definitely be having to get, uh, get rid of this. Uh, what we'll do is just add a political advisor as soon as we have 150 power to go fascist, and it's gonna be Tarsisu Pagilia. Um, interesting. Oh, and we only start with two technologies. That's not very good, is it? Again, if you've watched my communist playthrough uh, of Sweden that I'm still doing, of course, and it's released at the same time as this, so but you know you should check that out. And uh, what we'll we'll do is that the first uh, national focus is political effort, just for that political power that we get, uh, which is very nice. Admiral Augusto Hademaker. Hademaker. That's an interesting name. Um, Ray, how they make it, whatever. I'm Brazilian, I speak Portuguese, but yeah, you know, we have uh, very different names uh, due to our uh, pan world or European heritage. So, what is Brazil's situation? We start off with uh, seven divisions, uh, quite interesting. Let's uh, assign them to an army here. Let's give it to uh, forest move or ranger movement attack defense. Jungle, 5, attack, defense, yeah, no, jungle rat sounds interesting. We don't exactly have many forests, but we do have lots of jungles in Brazil. I, uh, I mean, I don't know how they categorize that here, though. But oh well. Uh, so, what is our aim in this particular campaign? Of course, we're gonna turn fascist, but again, um, there, the world, or South America, is guaranteed by the United States, so conquering them like our neighbors might be tricky and risky to say the least what we're gonna do though is uh, try to go for naval supremacy we're gonna make our fleet badass okay and in that fashion if uh, we if we do have a big enough fleet I, I, I'm not actually sure if we're ever going to be able to beat the United States but if I make them fascist then maybe we can uh, you know just take our neighbors otherwise we'll be helping out our uh, fascist brethren throughout the world um, but yeah I think that's the plan well, let's trade with Germany you know they're gonna be partners I could trade with someone closer by but you know there's no war right now so it's fine 
and uh, we increase the opinion. Oh wait, do we have something else that we're uh, missing? Yes, we are missing quite a lot of things. That's not very good. You know what, let's trade with our neighbors. Oh wait, Ecuador is not a neighbor, I forget. <laughs> you know, Brazil borders pretty much everyone uh, in South America other than Ecuador and Chile. So that's a nice fact. I just love playing as a big country, I mean, compared to Sweden. <laughs> we have volunteer only army and our manpower is already at like 524k. <laughs> when you play as Sweden, it's like, if you have volunteer only, your manpower is at like 9,000. The remitalization of the Rhineland. Alright, cool. Uh, oh, political efforts done. Okay, so. Uh, that means we can put our little fascist man here. Tassiso Pagilia. And uh, he'll give us uh, daily fascism support 0.1%. That's huge. Again, like the... Oh, fascism on the rise. The Brazilian people uh, have a noble history, a history they've been made to forget under the weak and cowardly rule of the Estado Novo. They claim to represent the people, but can so feeble a state enforce the will of the people? Only by spilling blood of these traitors can we fulfill our destiny. The fascist speakers in Brazil have made no secret of what they think of our current uh, rulership and political system. Speeches like these have tapped into a public dissent that is particularly pronounced in the more conservative sections of the military. We'll uh, increase the coup chance because I don't exactly want a... Uh, oh, increase the chance of popular support for a fascist coup. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, we'll do the higher-ups may harbor unspoken sympathies. It's strange that both give you the same event. I thought that fascism could also trigger a civil war, but uh, maybe that's not the case. The fan Spanish? No, the Spanish Civil War has broken out. What will this mean for Spain? Uh, we shall see. Now, I am going down the same path that I was doing with Sweden with the uh, construction effort and, you know, just uh, building up our industry, but I'm also seeing that I could go nationalism focus here already and get uh, daily fascism support plus 0.1%, but, you know, that would be wasting two focuses, so that's like four months of uh, focus to get down there and for what really hmm not too sure militarism uh, yeah actually that's pretty nice I mean we'll be going down this route later on anyway so you know what let's let's do this let's try to speed up the takeover naval research time I like that let's uh, let's do this Several high-ranking members of the Brazilian military have expressed support, some privately and some openly, for the fascist movement in Brazil. They feel the Estado Novo has forgotten how important discipline and patriotism is to keeping the country together, and are increasingly annoyed by the army being treated by the government as more of a tool than one of the nation's most important institutions. Some of them go as far as to suggest that a new government is needed one that knows how to lead Brazil with strength and tradition into the next half of the century. This faction may not uh, predominantly be politicians, but some of them have gained positions in the Department of Defense. If these developments continue, they may have sufficient political support to execute a coup. Interesting. The Olympics... Uh, Olympic? Oh my god, I can't say anything today. Are concluded. Cool. I just realized if we go fascist, we'll also have the ability to, I mean, not only help uh, Germany in Europe, but uh, mostly, I think, uh, to land parties and go for the colonial uh, agitation, uh, which I think will be very interesting. This is changing at 0.1% uh, per day, even though I unlock the uh, fascism support, and we have the politician, which, sh which should be helping that out uh, even more, but I guess it's 0.5. Somehow it just reduces. Uh, it always tends to go down uh, as it reaches closer to 50. Italy took one state. All right. In Hearts of Iron 3, uh, Italy sh uh, usually like either puppeted or annexed, but in all the games I've played so far now in Hearts of Iron 4, they've always annexed, so that's uh, rather interesting. You know, since we're trying to industrialize Brazil, I think we're going to go in the industrial research time. I In the Swedish campaign, I went for the electronics thing, but the electronics thing, even though it's nice with the, the whole 
decreased research or increased research speed um, there's a lot of like decryption and encryption which I don't think are too useful in our situation here uh, Republican Spain is winning again uh, we I really want to become fascist like really quickly and hope that they can hold out so that, that we can send some troops to uh, to help them out I also just had an interesting idea and that's to create uh, a faction of our own um, which would be interesting and uh, I don't know what's required for that though uh, but you know I'll, like I don't, I don't think like a fa any faction that we could create would really make a huge difference in the world I think uh, we've got to help out you know the main war here man is it just me or is our production of ships like really really slow even a light cruiser four years I mean where is your efficiency cap I can't see it a fascist coup d'etat some will say they saw it coming both these those who warned against the dangers of fascism and those who ex extolled extolled it as the savior of Brazil have found their prophecies made reality today as the military in Rio de Janeiro overthrew the Estado Novo led government and seized power Getúlio Vargas is missing removed or rumored to have gone into exile and the coup has been met with a little initial resistance the new Brazilian leadership has uh, no plans to allow resistance to grow either martial law has been declared and with the changes that are underway I oh grow either right okay this is a new sentence see I always fail at reading reading these, these things publicly whatever comes after is unlikely to be very different a strong state is needed to protect the people from themselves and uh, the reign of terror begins which gives us a nice political power gain for like uh, two years integralist Brazil interesting oh I want to see that flag a bit closer, but uh, I can't, unfortunately. What's interesting here is that actually Getúlio Vargas was uh, kind of a fascist. Uh, he, even though we uh, Brazil joined the the war on the Allies side in the end, um, it turn, turns out Getúlio Vargas was uh, working closely with Hitler and even deported some people to uh, a German concentration camps. So that's interesting if you just, you know, it's a tid, tidbit, tidbit of history if you want to know. Ah, I always forget this. We need 30 divisions to be able to send uh, volunteers. That's a pity. It's a pity we don't have like an air for, or I mean the naval theorist here for uh, naval theory gain. But you know, let's uh, focus on the military then. Because we are going to have marines after all, uh, and you know, people doing stuff, so being able to change our divisions would be nice without you know, losing a bunch of equipment in exercise. The Hindenburg disaster, so this time it actually blew up. Oh, the humanity. Yeah, seems like the uh, Republicans are going to win this time as well. That's uh, quite unfortunate for our fascist cause. Actually, oh, Venezuela. How? I just forgot we can... Uh, Ask to join faction with the Germans. Ooh, interesting. Should we? Yeah, why not? We'll do it. We stand together. Lovely. That's uh. So who are how? How's the world looking? It's me, and it's Germany. Wow, the second member of the Axis. Not Italy, not Japan, but Brazil. You know, I'm clicking around in South America, and I noticed something very interesting. Uh. You know Uruguay, and then you click Argentina has you know their different leader here. But then you go Chile, you go Peru, but Boli okay Bolivia has a different uh, Paraguay, uh, Ecuador, Colombia, Venezuela. It's all the same guy. Incredible, right? Of course it, they have a different name, but it's just the same portrait. That's uh, let's see Panama, Nicaragua, Honduras, Costa Rica. Man, this guy is uh, quite powerful. We've got a uh, uh, ally to him. He seems uh, to know what he's doing. Ooh, seems like uh, oh, they're also fascist. Good. So I think we'll we'll improve relations with Venezuela and Peru, and uh, try to get them in the axis if we can. Of course, we're not the leaders, so we can't invite them. But oh well. 
let's start going down the naval uh, doctrines here. Fleet and being, I think, is going to be perfect for us. We'll do battlefield con concentration. Because, uh, yeah, I want... Oh, no, this is a floating airfield. Grand Battle Fleet. Which one is the... Is, like, the... Uh, Strong focused battle f battleships, yeah, I mean, we're going for battleships, not base strikes or trade interdiction. We're trying to just destroy other navies, so we'll do this. Alright, it's time to go war economy. Should have done this earlier, but uh, yeah, we need to give up the, the whole civilian thing. Marines 1 should have done this a while ago. Ooh, Japan just declared war as we... Uh, stops recording there, and that's nice. Alright, let's, uh, can we do second research law? No, we need 29 more fact. or wait, sorry. Uh, 19 more factories. Is my math right? Yes, 19 more factories to do that. But, I think we'll do... Uh, we'll already go with naval effort here, because uh, navy experience plus 25, that's pretty nice. I feel like we desperately need the synthetic refineries, so that's because uh, we're constantly running out of oil, we're importing stuff from abroad. I'm thinking why, like how do I get more resources from my tr uh, land? May oh yeah, there's a tech for that, I think. Uh, so I'll also look into that. Time to go down the path of the large navy. Imagine capital ship effort though, oh yeah, that's that's what we're going for there. Capital ship attack and screen attack. Interesting. Welcome to the government, Floriano Peixot. The Anschluss of Austria, if that is what they wish. Welcome Austria to uh, our lo beautiful little league of countries here. Uh, has anyone else joined it? Let's see. No, it's just us. That's very nice. You know, this is kind of crazy and maybe it's a waste of political power, but again, uh, it'd be really nice if the U.S. joined our side eventually. Like, it's it's as if Brazil senses, you know, oh, I think there's some dark times coming and the U.S., you know, they need to be on our side. So they're like, oh yeah, let's uh, do in, in, uh, try to influence them. Uh, I wasted some points trying to improve relations again with Venezuela. And we still cap at 2020, which is, which is like terrible. Just one point, damn it. Yep, Republican Spain won. Alright, well, too bad. Ah, same thing with Peru. 2020. God damn it. Alright, I've added some um, engineers to the Marines here. And of course, we'll be expanding our Marine divisions later, but we don't exactly have the army experience for that. We'll save that. We'll uh, uh, set you... Oh, we didn't set... Come on, set you to there, click here, and we'll also go ahead and change the um, infantry here and add some support artillery. I think that would be very good for them to have, although we'll also have to research some better support art artillery, I guess. I'm not actually sure if I want motorized units or not, because uh, to me, it's the whole marine thing is... Uh, more of an issue, and I mean, oh, let's uh, let's yeah, let's do. Did we need better artillery? Yeah, I think we needed better artillery. Ah, uh, but you know what? The the support things are just great. Let's um. What was it I was doing? Where is the support thing? Sorry, there. Yes, there. Oh, uh, improved. Uh, yes, support weapons. There we go. Oh, you've got to love this desperate defense. Look at that icon there. Non-discriminatory non conscription. A guy in a wheelchair with a rocket launcher. Um, Alright, let's... Uh, I do feel like we need some sort of, like, land doctrines. I'm looking for some marine stuff. Something that will help us with... Um with, you know, landing marines all over the world. You know what, let's go with uh, the grand battle plan. Um, because, I don't know, I don't feel like we'll be having massive invasions of things, and neither will we, like, try to blitzkrieg stuff. We're just, uh, 
minding our own business. We're going like kind of like the United States. Of course, they did, you know, deploy quite a lot of troops in Europe, but um, we're, we're, we don't we won't have that many troops. So, Munich Agreement uh, seems like the Germans have taken the Sudetenland, just as they do, and the first Vienna Award. What does this give? Gains opinion of German Reich. Ah, right, so Hungary might join us. That's nice. I'm looking at the construction speed for our ships, and it's just so slow. I don't think we're gonna have a grand fleet, but we'll, uh, we'll you know, we're at, le at least we're building something. I haven't even read the name of our leader here. It's uh, Plinio Salgado. Interesting. Salgado actually means salty, so <laughs> uh, that's kind of funny. Um. Yeah, but the support is definitely growing. We still have uh, f almost 40% support for Getulio Vargas there. But, you know, that will disappear. You know, technolo uh, technology sharing would be really interesting to go down on. Uh, but at the moment, I think we're going to just uh, try to get some, maybe some motorized units. I'm not sure. Like, we need... I know I'm saying navy, navy, but you know, ah man, this is so difficult. Ah fuck it, let's do it. Let's get some militarism. I also saw that uh, you get in military use, you get plus twenty percent popularity for fascism, and then we also lower paramilitary uh, stuff on the way down there. Uh, which is uh, pretty good. And then this one, ideological fa uh, fanaticism, is great for the defense of our core territory. The German Reich claims Memel. Well, congratulations. And they took it, of course. But you know what? It's uh, the 14th of February, 1939. And uh, yeah, I mean, we've already played three years, so that's pretty impressive for one episode. So I think I'm going to end this one here. Uh, don't forget to leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Do check out my other Hearts of Iron uh, Let's Plays that are going on, different also uh, time lapses. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I'll see you later.